Hello and welcome back. In the previous lecture, you learned how to customize the cursor component to provide the user with visual cues when using gaze based interactions. And in this lecture, we are going to have a look at how to further improve visual feedback and performance by using selective intersections. Indeed, by default, the Raycaster component tests every object in the scene for intersection. And you usually don't want this to happen for two reasons. First, it can be misleading for the user. For example, if I look at any of the boxes above the red ones, the cursor animation makes me think that my interaction with them is being processed, but nothing is actually happening because maybe my input is not going through. Or as another example, if I look at any of the red boxes after the first click synthetic event has been fired, Again, both the cursor animation and the boxes changing their color create a mismatch between the visual feedback I am provided with and my expectations for something to happen. And the second reason is that testing everything in your scene for intersections or clicks can be bad for performance, because intersection testing is an operation that runs over 60 times per second. So, to select specific entities that you want to test for intersection, you can attach the Raycaster component and specify the Objects property, which takes a query selector value. Therefore, you can use classes to select only the elements with a specific value, let's say dot .clickable. So, if I add the class attribute to our left red box, and fill it with a clickable value, and then copy and paste them to the other two red boxes. You can see that not only have we sorted any misleading interaction with the three boxes above, but we have also improved the performance because now the Raycaster is testing only three out of six objects in our scene. Speaking of performance, we are going to have a deeper look at this topic in a dedicated section later on in this course. So, here in our scene, of course, we can still interact with the red boxes and fire all the synthetic click events, but we still haven't finished with them, because now we need to invert the selective intersections for the objects in our scene, making the below boxes not clickable and the above boxes clickable. For this we can use the event set component again, so I'll start with the left red box and create an event called clear class, so that when we click on the red box, its class value will be set to not clickable. Then I create another event called tar class as a shortening for target class, so that when the click synthetic event is fired, I can target the green box and give it the class clickable. I'm going to copy and paste these two lines of code so that we can achieve the same result when we click on the green box. Then I change the target ID to left box. And of course, we need to give the left red box this very ID. However, if we test the interactions in our scene, nothing has changed. Because the Raycaster component keeps a local array of entities to test against for intersection, the A-Frame rebuilds automatically via the refresh objects method. But A-Frame runs this process only when an entity is appended or detached from the scene, that is when an entity is created or removed dynamically. So, since the refresh objects method will not get called during normal DOM mutations, for example when some entity changes its class, like in our case, we need to call it to manually refresh the list of objects that the Raycaster component tests against. And to do so, first I'll give the entity to which we previously attached the Raycaster component a unique ID, let's say my GB cursor, 
and then I'm going to register a very basic component. But I won't get too much into detail in this lecture as we are going to have a look at this topic later on in the course. So if you have front-end web development experience or programming skills, I'm sure you'll have no problems in understanding what is going on here. Whereas for those of you who don't know JavaScript, I can try to explain in the simplest way possible these lines of code. Refresh OBJ is the name of the component that we are registering and attaching to both the left red box and the green box. Just make sure to place the component after the events we are using to change the class values. And here we run a function that is a set of instructions so that whenever we click on an entity to which the refresh OBJ component is attached, we'll be able to target the entity with the ID mygb cursor to which we attached the Raycaster component so that we can finally access the Raycaster component itself to call the refresh objects method. And a method is just a function, hence a set of instructions, inside an object. I'm going to open the developer tools console to show you what I just described. And in a nutshell, the console is a simple text interface that allows you to input commands and view outputs. So if we take a look at the properties of this entity with the ID mygb cursor, and then follow the dot syntax to access the components attached to it, we find the Raycaster component among the others, and inside it you can finally see the refresh objects method. So, to recap, when we click on any entity to which we attach the refresh OBJ component, we are basically refreshing the list of objects that the Raycaster component tests against. As you know, you can download the source files of this lecture and freely use this code should you need to. And if you'd like to understand and learn more about JavaScript, well, my advice would be to start studying it, as you'll be able to do even more in A-Frame. There is plenty of resources available out there. Here on Udemy I recommend this free course from Lawrence Turton called JavaScript Essentials, or if you are willing to buy one, I recommend Modern JavaScript from the Beginning by Brad Traversi. Well, it's time to finally test interactions in our scene. As you can see, the refresh OBJ component we created is working as expected, and we are provided with proper and effective visual cues now, so there is no more room for misleading visual feedback. And moreover, we are constantly keeping the number of entities to test for intersection in our scene down to a maximum of three. As an exercise, you can work on the remaining four boxes and give them the same clickable and not clickable behavior after the click synthetic event is fired. And should you need to double check your code, you can download the resources available for this lecture and have a look at the final version of this scene. I'm taking this occasion to say that I'm aware that some of you guys may be already familiar with some topics, but I'm planning a logical sequence for the content topics to enable students of all levels to understand and follow. I can just tell you that there is a lot more to come in the next lectures and sections, and I appreciate your patience and understanding. So, this is how you can use selective intersections in your A-frame projects to provide the user with effective visual feedback and save on performance, and I'll see you in the next lecture.